Did you know that in the 1970s a man found a way to make millions of dollars by selling rocks? Yes, you heard it right. And it wasn't just a few dollars, it was a multi-million dollar business. Just imagine turning a simple rock into a financial goldmine. But how did it all start? Around 50 years ago, Gary Dale and his friends were hanging out in a bar and their conversation turned to the destructive nature of pets. Dogs, cats and... Waffles! And not only did their pets ruin furniture, but what's even more, they needed non-stop care. From taking them for walks, feeding them and cleaning up after them. So those started to think, what would the dream pet look like? A pet that wouldn't require feeding, walking, passing, grooming, and would never die or get sick. No. And gentlemen, that's when the million dollar idea struck him. A rock. However, Dale's friends were confused, I guess. I mean, it would be kind of weird if any of my friends would give me a rock as a pet. Especially because I don't have friends. Nonetheless, in light of his friends' reactions, Dale began to take the idea more seriously and even created an instruction manual for the pet. But what can such an instruction manual contain? Congratulations, you are now the owner of a genuine pedigreed pet rock. Your new rock is a very sensitive pet and may be slightly traumatized from all the handling and shipping required in bringing the two of you together. Note, when you remove the rock from its box, it appears to be excited. Place it on some old newspapers. The rock will know what the paper is for and will require no further instruction. It will remain on the paper until you remove it. Your rock is an individual a few of the more popular breeds. You're a little confused if you think a pet rock can be taught to stand. A rock has no feet. Healthcare. A rock in perfect health. A rock in obvious distress. As you can see, the manual was excellent, but selling the products required more than just a rock and the manual. Thus, they started to think about how to improve the product. And several days later, he finally came up with a revolutionary idea. Sell it like a real pet. Damn. Oh. Damn, boy! No. Damn, boy! First of all, he needed a pet carrier, which was essentially a box for the product. Next, he placed some straw into the box, creating a bed for the pet rack. Then he added the rack and the instruction manual, and it was ready for production. But now you might wonder, what drove Dale to take this idea so seriously? Well, his motivation was fueled by his challenging financial situation at the time. He was struggling to keep up with his bills and needed a way out. But to turn the concept into reality, Dale had to ask his friends for financial support. I am once again asking for your financial support. Their friends, George Cockley and John Higarty agreed, and they became investors in the project. George gave $10,000, which is equal to around 55000 of today, which was a really lot of money back then, even though the plan to sell racks didn't have much potential. And how was the expenses after all? Dale's most significant expense came from the die cutting and manufacturing of the boxes. The racks cost only one cent each, and the straw was nearly free. For the initial run of booklets, Dale had a printing job for a client, and he tagged the Petra booklet onto the main job. This resulted in a batch requiring only a cut and trim at almost no cost to it. He first showed the Petra at a gift show in San Francisco in August 1975 and waited to see how people would react. And as you probably guessed, people liked it right away and started ordering the Petra. Even Nima Marcus, a famous store, which I have never heard of, ordered 1000 Petra. And later, Bloomingdale's joined as well. Another store, which I have never heard of. But what's even more, Newsweek, are you serious? Featured the pet rock in a story with a picture, which got more people interested, and suddenly Dale's funny idea became really popular all across the country. During the holiday season, Dale sold up to 100,000 pet rocks per day. And in just a few months, he managed to sell between 1.3 and 1.5 million of them. Coakley, who initially invested $10,000, made a remarkable profit of $200,000. With a profit of 95 cents on each pet rock sold, Dale earned over $1 million. But the pet rock trend didn't last long, as these kind of trends usually don't. Although they were satisfied with the outcome, his two investors were not. They believed they deserved a larger share of the profits and ended up suing Dale for more money. And when the court said the investors were right, they wrote them a check for a significant six-figure sum. Later there were attempts to revive the pet rock, but all of them failed and people had moved on. But surprisingly to this day, the pet rock can still be found online and you can buy it for 30 bucks, which is probably a scam based on the reviews. 
Spokesmen for the May Company say that they are beginning to get returns of the pet rock. That one woman who bought one of these brought it back saying it was moving in the box when she bought it, but when she got it home, it stopped moving. <laughs>